What's happening, YouTubers? It's your boy CB, and we are back for my favorite segment on the channel, How to Watch Alongs with Recruits. On today's episode, for you guys that like Smash Mouth football, for you guys that like trench play and trench bullies, this is your episode. You have clicked on the right video. 2026 four-star offensive lineman Cannon Pickett is one of the fastest risers, not just in his class, but in recruiting, period, and it's just an absolute beast in the trenches plays on the offensive line with a tenacity that you see from a, a from an aggressive and explosive defensive tackle and i i think something about him having a wicked pass rusher as a brother probably plays into that but cannon is definitely his own man with his own skills and his own journey as well when it comes to his list of offers it goes from the top of the top in the sec the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12. But you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from the superstar himself. Fresh off of spring ball. Yes, Four-star 2026 offensive lineman, Cannon Pickett. Fresh off of a double practice day, y'all. How's it going, bro? Man, it's good. I appreciate you having me, man. I, I appreciate you have, being on. Literally, y'all, I'm not, I'm not joking with y'all. 15 minutes out of practice? 15, 20 minutes ago, you was in practice? In practice. Helping. So let's 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 get right into spring ball. You capped off spring ball today with the spring game. How was how was spring ball for you and the squad at Wharton? Uh I I actually transferred to Tampa Bay Tech. I'm not at Wharton anymore. Oh, let's go. But, yeah. But spring ball was good. There was definitely a lot of good competition. It was pretty good recruiting wise. And I, I definitely learned some more. How is that balancing recruiting spring? Camps, you could not rival Under Armour camps, yeah. and you got school as well. You got your own workouts outside of school that we know you do, and you still balancing, you know, learning a new new school that you're at and new teammates. How has that journey been balancing all that this yeah. spring? I mean, it's it's, been, it's definitely been a challenge, but it's something that I mean I'm able to adapt to. Like I'm used to putting in extra work. I'm used to adapting to something new, learning something new, like learning to play book quickly. And like for this recruiting stuff and all the cancer stuff, I watched Booker go through it. So like that's been a great help to me. And he he always helps me guide he always helps guide me through it. Uh, I, that was you just led me right into my next topic. So for those of y'all that don't know, and for the Canes fans, they're like, bro, we know, shut up. Like so his brother is Booker Pickett Jr., the true freshman defensive end at Miami, four star defensive end last year in the class. How much did getting to see how he handled visits, even, you know, in season, he was still taking some visits and phone don't stop even after you commit. How much did watching him go through his process help you in your journey, just knowing where you want to navigate? Like, okay, big bro did that. That was cool. But he did this and I'm not doing that. Yeah, it, it definitely helped me. It helped me figure out really what I want in the school and seeing him like write it down, put down his choices of what he wants in the school. I definitely took that in the mental note, and I kind of did that too. But, yeah, just seeing him do that and seeing, like, what type of programs these really are because I've, I've, I've been on a lot of visits with him. So I've been almost everywhere in the country with him and uh, California Power. So I know a lot about these schools. It's cool too because even going as the brother, you get to see them pitch to book it because they may not be pitching to you. And then a year later, then they do pitch to you. So you get to see, okay, what's what's nonsense? Like what is you what are you saying to me that you you also told my brother? It's cool that you get to kind of go through these things twice. There is a picture I love though. It's a warm-up picture from last year where from from behind it's Booker doing drills before the game, and you're in your stance as well. What were some of those battles in practice like, bro? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Man, Book, Booker is a dog. I cannot I can not lie to you. Booker is a dog. I, You know, I won some, and I, I definitely lost some. But it, it didn't really do anything but make me better. And he was always pushing me to be a better me. You ever figure out a, um, a counter for that spin move? I mean, no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm, I have not, but going against him so many times, I kind of learned his tendencies a little bit. And sometimes even when you know, you just can't stop it, but I've adapted to it. I know, I know how to stop. I know how to stop it somewhat now. You feel like that helped you grow as an offensive lineman quicker, N not just because you're going against someone who's your brother, 
just let's take out the fact that he's Booker Pickett. Just the list of pass rush moves he uses, it's something different every time. Hand in the dirt, hand up. He'll gonna creep up, walk up, spin moves, swim moves. So you're gonna see something different. You feel like those battles helped you progress quicker? Yeah, definitely. Like anytime I go against a speed rusher now, it feels like they're nothing compared to Booker. Like not nothing, but Booker was just so quick off the edge that everything else just feels slow down to me. Do you remember that first time you got him? Like that first time where you was like, "Oh, you're not, you're not as fast as you used to be no more." And you know what? It was, it was our last, it was our last practice to pass. It was my last practice against. Really? It, it, it didn't take the last practice at the after like the first round of the playoffs. The last practice we did one on one, and I finally got him. I was talking so much trash. It felt, it felt good. It felt so good. I love that. Hey, man, look. I, I like that for you. It's like, look, I don't care how many times I lost. You, you're supposed to beat me. Mm-hmm. I'm not, but you're going to get 100%. I don't care if it's the last practice. If this the one I won, this is the one we talk about for the, for the rest of our lives. This is the only moment yeah. we talk about. That's the only one we talk about. You know, I'm, I don't remember anything else. I just remember winning. <laughs> How is how is he with that? Was he as an older brother? Did he talk trash for all them years man. where he still got his moves off? Man, Booker is so like like almost nonchalant. Like, like he never talked trash. And sometimes oh, that's when worse. I, I was nah, that's worse. It's like like you just get beat and he just look at you and just like laugh or something. Like that's that's so embarrassing. Nah, like, that's worse, bro. Say something. Like, don't say something. don't. Like, yes. And sometimes that, that, when that's I beat him, that's the kind of people that beat you and be like, hey, but you almost had me there. Don't do that. Don't That's like <laughs> don't do that. Like, I don't want to hear that. It's like, no. <laughs> but I, I get. Uh, I like the you from the competitive standpoint. It's like, bro, I ain't. I'm not trying to hear that. But in his mind, he's probably really thinking hey, he almost had me. Like, <laughs> hold up. Like, he actually did almost have me there. So as many times as you probably felt like ah, I lost another rep, he was probably like, I barely, <laughs> I, yeah. ba- I barely I'm got him on there. that one. So it, it's it's cool because the other way was probably way different. All them times, he was probably still frustrated. He probably telling his other boys in the D-line, look, I, I probably only got one or two more moves I could put on, little bro, before he before he get me. So that day when you got him, he probably went back to the huddle and they was like, he got you, didn't he? He, he, he finally got you. They were, so they what were, I, they were talking to us. What I love about you getting to take these recruiting journeys early is when it's your time, you get to kind of see them through a different lens as we talked about. So I want to talk about a few schools. Let's start with the Miami Hurricanes. So you've been down there a couple times on campus. Obviously you went down there for the big, for, for, for Booker stuff, but you've been down there on your own as well. What if some of those, those experiences like being down there on, at the Miami campus? I can't. I can't say this enough times. I love like the whole staff in Miami. I love Crystal Ball. I love Mayor Ball, and I love their whole staff. It's always felt good. I've always liked to see them coach. Like when I went to the spring practice, seeing them coach up close and in person, it really tells me like what type of coach they are and how how they do it. Like Coach Mayor Ball, he's a real like. Even though he's this tall, he 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 know he, he knows a lot, and he's pretty hands on. Like you'll see him looking up, you'll see him looking up to the players yelling at them and putting getting his hands where they're supposed to be. It's it's funny, but it's amazing how much he knows. Yeah, you're not the you're not the first person to say that. Zaire Addison was like, yo, he's small, but when you see him put his hands on somebody that's six eight and move him, you'd be like, What? But he's also known for being just an incredible teacher. He is a former teacher. So that aspect of of his coaching, I think, is I think that's like his real calling card. He loves teaching. How much have you learned from just being around Mirabal and your conversations with him? Definitely. He I've heard well seeing him coach and I've asked questions about it later. Like I remember being up there, I saw him teaching something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know it was a, it was something to help me with my run blocking on like outside zone schemes. Definitely like the little stuff like that that I pay attention to. It definitely helps my game. Do you remember your very first interaction with Mario Cristobal? I love asking recruits this because you you guys all have a special relationship with him. No relationship is the same. But do you remember that first interaction with him? Yeah, my first interaction. I remember it was with it was with Booker. He we were on a visit up there. It it was for him. This is like, I think I was in eighth grade. I think, but when I was in eighth grade, I was like six three. Like, I was I was I was big. I was a big eighth grader. So I was like six three, two fifty, and I was up there. We were all just like 
talking and chopping it up. And then, yeah, it was it was nice. Six three two fifty in the eighth grade. All right, we talking about it now. Who in that family not athletic? It's too many of y'all. It, I, I have a feeling that it's not just the football players. Y'all got some tennis players on the uh, on the on the women's <laughs> side. I know y'all got some softball players, some track athletes. Oh, is goodness. it just? It, 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 am I? How close am I? Am I? My, my mom when she went to the University of Miami, she 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 used to row. She used to row. See. <laughs> And no, how, how really are some of those that. family outings, bro? Is it is it all hoops, all competing? Are y'all just a super competitive family? Super competitive, We're very competitive. What is it like being one of the younger ones in that family? I definitely get to learn from the older ones, but I also want to be better than all of them. It's, it, I feel like you got a, you got the opportunity to be better than all of them because you get to see how they – you're also the only one that plays offense. When you brought that up, I, I was like, that's crazy. He, he is kind of the traitor in his family. Everybody plays defense. Well, DJ plays both. So yeah, I guess you can kind of – if a civil war break out, he got to fight with you for a little bit. Like he got to be on your side for a little bit. But I, I like that you get to watch their journeys as well because – it, it, this ain't. E I know fans think it's easy. Fans say things like, "Hey, Chalupa, when is he gonna reclassify?" I'm like, "Bro, that that is hard." You asking somebody yeah. to skip high school, like I, I don't think they understand how much you guys sacrifice to be great at this. And when you get a chance to see others sacrifice at it and see it pay off, it makes those hard days like, "All right, look, if this day is hard for me, like Book had hard days, D Dad had hard days when it was when recruiting was not as as wide open as it is now." So you get to see other people that went through this. But the reason I bring that up is you got to see people accomplish their dreams. Your father literally accomplished his dream. Not a lot of people can say that, that they they had a dream and they really accomplished it. How much do you feel like that helped you when you were young? Just as obviously it became football. But did, were you that kid where you, you did truly believe that if I set my mind to something, I can do it? Because I'm looking every day at my father that really did accomplish his dream. That's exactly that's exactly what I thought. Like I've I saw him do it first person. I've saw I've seen all the work that he's put in. I've seen all the work that my mother's put in as well. Everything they've done to get us where we are right now. Like I definitely know I can do it if I if I really put my mind to it and work hard enough. It's a powerful message to to let somebody know that dream because often dreams fail because you think they're not. They're, they're not achievable. It is a powerful message to go. I, I could probably be an astronaut because somebody told my dad he wasn't going to be in the NFL. Yeah, and, exactly. and he did it. So if I decide I want to be an astronaut, I could probably be an astronaut. So we talked a little bit earlier about some of these camps. You went down to the rivals camp, absolutely showed out this year. How was that experience for you out there going up against other elite talent? Uh, it's definitely made me like, I feel like it, it boosted my confidence. But it also kind of showed me what I needed to work on, cause sir, cause I def I won some reps, but on the reps, I lost. I paid more attention to them and see what I did wrong. So it helped me learn what to improve on. Have you always been a student of the game like that, to where it's not it's not the pancakes, it's the ones where ah, I probably should have got them. Yeah, I saw a quote from Tom Brady. It was like, "Don't focus on the good place, focus on what you did wrong." It was something along those lines. But I've always kind of done that. Like, I posted the reps that I won, but I saved the ones that I lost so I could really watch them and really see what I did wrong and really understand. I love that. The highlights for y'all. The lowlights for me. Like, exactly. I like I exactly. like that. That's a great way to do that. Not just, all right, look at the highlights. Now the highlights are, you know, it's a recruiting tool, but yeah. that's not what you study. And I love that you're like, I need both of those, though. I need the ones where I got beat. And the people at Robbins is probably like, I mean, okay, like we'll cut, we'll cut them for you. But I, I like that it, you use these camps not as a chance to boost your ego, but a chance to get better. I absolutely love that. And for those of y'all that are going, I right, play his film now. I got you. I got you. So we see you doing some run blocking, some pass blocking, some of the most aggressive feet moving. You don't either hear the whistle or you don't care. But I want to know what's more enjoyable for you. A pancake in the run game, or when you got an elite pass rusher and you know he can't do nothing with you, he can't bend, he can't swim move, you shutting him down. Ooh, I mean, no pass rusher can really do anything with me, so I say pancake in the run game. 
Let's go. I don't see a pass rusher in America that can really do anything with me. So, Ooh, especially on the like this. Yeah, I like yeah. that. We know an offensive lineman loves being at the second level, but I want to hear it. How much do you love these screens, bro? Oh my, I love, like, getting able to just hit somebody and show off my athleticism. And I didn't even – I really took a bad angle this play. I had to redirect almost, but it felt good. Hit him. I didn't like how quick he got up, though. Cl- he got up a little too quick. Like a linebacker. Where's that tenacity come from? Because – it's not just I'm gonna deliver a blow. You delivered the blow, and then your next response is he got up too quick. Like <laughs> where does where does that where does that come from, bro? Man, that comes from everybody in my family, but especially my dad. <laughs> like you should hear the you should hear the like the talk my dad gives me before games, like just like just run through somebody. I'm, I'm getting hot though talking about it. I got. <laughs> I, gotta I like down. that though. So so mid game when you didn't had four or five pancakes. Uh, you did have a, a pass rusher that thought he could do something, which you shutting him down. Y'all are killing it. What kind of player is Cannon Light on the field when you absolutely oh. balling? Oh, <laughs> oh. well, I like, to talk trash. I like to talk trash. I, I love to talk trash. Like, I like if somebody's talking trash to me, I'm talking trash back. I love that. When I'm just talking trash to somebody, and I'm just beating them all game. I start to kind of feel bad. Like, I'm, I'm just beating you all game. You don't got nothing. You else want to the say. competitiveness. Like, like you, my, my you, bad. You, yeah, you want the back and forth. Is it? Do you feel like it's going to be a bit different this year? Because even last year, you're no longer under the radar. More so this year. Now, some defensive tackle, some defensive end, all week. He like, if I could just beat Cannon two or three yeah. times, I'm probably going. Hey, I may not get a scholarship, but somebody going to look. If I, you feel like it's gonna be different this year with a bit of a target on your back, yeah, I I know I cannot make any mistakes this year. I definitely know that. Does that does that change how you approach the game coming into this year? I mean, no, I never I never plan on making mistakes. Honestly, I just Let's go. I just do what I love to do. But now you're a veteran. I know it's a little weird to think about, Ooh, right? But but next year. It's, it's you when, when when times are tough, you one of the guys they're gonna be looking at now. Mm-hmm. How is that approaching that that leadership role where now a freshman offensive lineman, sophomore offensive lineman, he's gonna come to you now for ideas like, oh man, I got invited to my first camp. What do I do, Cannon? Now like they're gonna be coming to you. How how is that adjusting to being one of the old heads in the locker room mm-hmm. now? You made me feel old, dog. I just turned 16. <laughs> but I definitely, I definitely want to take on that leadership role for especially some of the people younger than me. I already kind of do a little bit, even though I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm old enough. But at the same time, like people, people see the position that I'm in. People listen to me. They understand me, and so they still give me my respect and that. But I definitely like to be a leader. For you, I know the answer to this, but I'm gonna ask anyway. How important is film study for you? <laughs> all the way up man if has it always been that way yeah man, i always feel like if you understand your opponent understand the defense that they're going to run understand what he does on certain downs like understand if he lines up right here he might do a stunt it, it slows down the game makes everything so much easier do you know when that moment was because I, I i love asking this because Varsity is faster than we always think it is when we first start playing. And they tell you that, and you're like, ah, it can't be that much faster. And you go out there, you're like, hey, boys is really moving. Like, <laughs> boys is really moving. But then it clicks. And then one time, somebody, the ball gets snapped, and you're like, hold up. Like, I'm, I can talk to myself mid play. Like, I can, okay. he's in the middle of his move, and I can talk to myself about what he's doing. Do you remember that moment when the game started slowing down for you? It's like, it was really in the middle of a game where I'm just like looking at him and I'm like, I'm 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 literally in the middle of my kick step. I'm like, wait, he's he's gonna try to go inside. Like it's it's easy, like it's easy once you come with a little bit of experience and more practice, you you start to understand people and you start to see stuff coming. Like somebody's not gonna line up this tight and then try to go all the way out here. So there's no reason to kick all the way out. I'm getting a little technical, but it's nah, d- nah it's uh, see this. This is how I. This is why I know Mirabal like you. When you said I'm getting too technical, he probably loved them conversations. I know he does, but that that shows a true student of the game. 
like not not just like you said earlier you don't just watch your highlights it's finding those tendencies giving yourself a little bit of an edge now you already got a physical edge on most people that's gonna line up but i love that too it's just that extra if you can just give yourself just that little bit extra do you have certain offensive linemen you like to watch to maybe study from and take from other guys yeah definitely uh Pnei Thor, i love i love watching him i love the way he plays I, honestly i even watch some people that are close to my age like um <laughs> sometimes i watch zaire's film and try to like I see what he does sometimes. I shout out to Zaire him. Addison for yeah, star uh, OT. You know I kind of sound like a fan, but shout out to him. Um, he he's a great player, so I definitely like learn. I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him and uh, Coach Ray. I like to. I just like to study some people that are like up there. Like I don't remember his name, but a tackle from Washington that just got drafted. I love watching his film. Yeah, you mentioned Penny Sewell, who is one of the most athletic offensive linemen I think we've probably seen in the past five to 10 years. You recently had a chance to visit his alma mater, go mm -hmm. all the way out West, out there to Oregon. How was that visit? And Dan Lanning is building something super special out there. Yeah. What's that relationship like with the staff? I love, I love Oregon and I love the whole staff. I like, I love, I love everything, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> you asked me something, I love everything. But I do love everything about the school. I love Coach Terry, the O line coach. He's a he's a great coach, and he definitely knows what he's doing. He's great at developing, and they definitely have a plan over there. They're definitely rising. And you see, that I, I know a lot of people like to say, "Well, you know, that's what Mario built. He put that in place. Landing made sure to continue that with all right. The offensive line was here. Let's continue building that. Like let's continue having that focus. How?" How important is that when you're diagnosing a school, trying to figure out, all right, do they do they just want their five, that, you know, that can clear a lane? Or is there an extra offensive line coach here? How much do they develop? How much does that go into your decision process when it's yeah. even to go visit a school? I definitely want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to be developed well. Uh, Oregon has, like, a lot of O-line coaches over there. So there's going to be multiple pairs of eyes on me at every time if I was to go there. And I know that'll help me if I need to hear coaching in a different way or if one coach saw something that the other one didn't. That's definitely a big factor in development. And I just want to go wherever I'm going to be developed and the best player. So you are, I like to say tackles in Miami, tackles in Florida are battle tested on a different level than places, other places in the country because of the speed. Mm -hmm. in in florida how much do you feel like that gives you a leg up because we're not not just book when it comes to speed edge rushers the speed in florida is insane you yeah. got dudes built like james williams coming off the uh, off the edge six six running a four five got no business on the defensive line <laughs> and, 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 and and now they lining up against you how much do you feel like that's going to give you a leg up when you get to the next level seeing because, you know, they, oh, the speed is different at the next level. But speed in Florida is just different. How much do you feel like that helps you transition to the next level when that time comes? Um, that will definitely give me an upper hand going against better competition than some I went against in their respective area or conference. Um, the speed in Florida is definitely different. I remember at the Rivals camp. I went against these these twins. They were just posting on match prep. I went against these twins. Man, they were they were they were big, but they were also quick. So like just being able to adjust and be able to do something with somebody quick and being able to like fight the power, it would definitely give me upper hand in college or and even the, at the next level from now. Are they the twins from Miami Norland, the Desire twins? Yeah. yeah that, see, that's what I'm talking about. Dudes built like defensive tackles that play DN. They arms go down to their kneecaps and they fast. It don't it don't make <laughs> no sense. Crazy. It, but you as an offensive lineman, you're more athletic than I think anyone gives offensive linemen credit for. A lot of times when you say offensive lineman to somebody, if I tell somebody, oh, Cannon the beast, they're gonna think, oh, he a he a big dude who can't move. Yeah. But you move earlier in your career. Was that because you played other positions, played other sports? Where, where does that that lateral quickness come from? Well, 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm very genetically blessed. So some of that stuff <laughs> came out. But I've played almost every sport in the book growing up. I played baseball, I played basketball, I played soccer when I was like six or younger, I don't remember. And I've been playing football since I was four. So I've always been genetically blessed with athleticism, but it also comes with some other outside activities. So with someone being that much of a versatile athlete, what was it about offensive linemen that for you was like, oh, this is home, this is where I want to be? Man, I didn't I didn't even know. I remember because <laughs> my dad used to coach at Wharton High School, and I was in eighth grade when he was coaching. And the O-line coach, he was basically saying, oh, yeah, you're you going to be on the O-line when you come here. And I was just like, whatever you say, man, I don't, I don't know. And then I started playing it, and then I got, I had a love for it after that. And it's like just being able to just be a man on the field, like, like, just make it, just imposing your will on somebody else. There you it's go. Just, it's the physicality. It. I love it's the line. physicality. So in basketball, how many? Were you a quick foul out, dude? Because you. You liking the physicality. Was you a center that was yeah. like, look, I'm going to get these fouls and I'm going to be out of here? I used to get a bunch of fouls. <laughs> I remember I, I, I accidentally elbowed somebody once. I got my right here. <clears throat> I remember that was in like eighth grade. Yeah, but you were six three, bro. You, when you say eighth grade, you say it like, yeah, but I was I was small back then. <laughs> you were six three. You elbow oh, so that that that's that's literally like me a full 34-year-old elbowing like a child right now. <laughs> that you is six three. That, really, it, really can you dunk? Sport. Did you ever get up there and, and be able to dunk? I never I didn't dunk in eighth grade, but I can now. What I'm, I might I might have to post it on Twitter one of these days. Hey, yeah, I need that. I need that clip. I, have to post it. I I'm, need I'm, that clip. I'm not doing nothing crazy, but I'm 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 definitely I getting did. up there. Pam, I don't think you need to do nothing crazy. You're 6'4", 290. You're not supposed to be able to jump like that. Well, I'm just genetically blessed. It, we, You know what we're going to call that for now on? When somebody asks you about a skill that, that, that you don't know how to explain, just be like, pick it. Just pick it. <laughs> it's, 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 just, just pick, pick it, bro. It. Like, hey, how you run that 40 times? Just pick it. Pick I don't know, man. Uh, just pick I know. It. Or, or tell them, like, you should see my aunt. Like, <laughs> I, I, probably, I, probably, I probably got an aunt run a 4 2. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> it, it, in about four or five years, we, they, they got a quarter. They probably got a quarterback somewhere. Now that you play on the offense, on the offensive line, now the, yeah. now so. Um, DJ's little brother, Jonathan, he, he played a little bit of quarterback. He, he, he See? That. See what I'm saying, y'all? And I didn't know that. I did not know that. I'm just guessing that in this athletic family, somebody got a cannon. Now, I'm sure somebody probably already had one. It just seems like it's a family that want to hit people. You know, DJ used to play quarterback back in Little League. Did he? DJ played everything, though. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. When they, people they ask me what he does. He's like, football? I don't know, man. You just let him play football? Yeah, just Safety, ball receiver? I don't. How how what's that competitiveness like with you and him? Ooh, ooh, I don't know. That's that's <laughs> hell, that's kind of different. Cause I don't really get to go against him, but he he's up here. I'm trying to I'm trying to get up there. I I, I want to be the best picket. Let's go. That I mean, bro, you're not gonna have that answer for another fifty years though, unless y'all it's. They not stopping making them clearly, and <laughs> I don't. I don't think you're gonna have that answer anytime soon. You before we started, I joked. I was like, I bet you got some cousins. He was like, Yeah, probably about another two, three years. I got a couple cousins. Not joking. Literally, it's a one of the most athletic families. What I like though is, like I said earlier, it goes back to a family full of dreamers because. It's not something that's not achievable. Literally, if you got a five-year-old cousin right now and he turn on the TV and look at Tom Brady and say, I'm going to be the next Tom Brady, nobody in that room is going, boy, turn on. They're going to say, all right, let's go get you a football. <laughs> like, it's just, it, it like, is exactly. like now, now we got your quarterback coach and you got an IG and a huddle. Like, it's time to get going. You probably are going to be the next. I love that. So one thing I love before I get you out of here, I got to ask you this. On the days when you can't, when your body's sore, tired, 
today when you had you had two practices, you had to do a podcast after, you still ever need dinner, and tomorrow you got to get up do it all over again. When when you wake up and your body is just too sore, what's that why that keeps Cannon Pickett moving? Just uh, it might sound bad, just just to be better than every other Pickett, really. That just, motivation. Just I'm just like, yeah, being the best. Book, Booker will probably get out of bed right now, so you know, <laughs> let, me, let, let, let me get out of bed. Hey, look, I know, uh, I know, there's no decision made. However. If that does happen, I know it's going to be wild at Green Tree. Because at that point, you're not really little brother no more. Yeah. Like, at that point, it's just picket on picket crime. And I, I, I think I speak for everybody in the fan base when I say we would love to see that. But before that, let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. So throughout the year, when he has his huddle, a lot of times they'll break them down game by game. Do they stream your games? Um, I'm pretty sure they do. If they do, send me links, and I'll tweet them out. This way we can keep up with you all year, and we'll do watch-alongs too so we can sit there and watch you pancake everybody for 10 straight games. And then and then after this year, when you have another dominating huddle, we'll bring you back on so we can watch that tape. So until then, let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter so they can keep up with you. All right. My Instagram is C3Way with three Ys, and my Twitter is just Cannon Pickett. Make sure it has one in. Not two ends. What Cannon Picker with one end, and I'm going to link both of those down. So all you got to do is click them. You'll go straight to it. And his huddle. For those of y'all that are like, okay, I need to watch this again. His huddle will be linked down there. You can click it. Go follow him right now. I tell y'all this all the time. And then somebody DMs me. Who's that one that you that you did the interview with that was pushing that dude around? It's Cannon Pickett. Go follow him now. Don't wait and ask me three months later. Bro, thank you so much for coming on. I wish you nothing but good health this year. Like I said, after you dominate for a whole nother season, we're going to run this back. We're going to do it again. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you having me. Like, share, and subscribe. Go follow Cannon right now. We out.